Okay, this is an overview of the Minds on Physics uh, Vector and Projectile Levels 7 through 10. Um, I've decided to give you an extension on the due date for these levels. They're now due on Monday, November 3rd. Um, on that day, you'll have a quest over them. Uh, if you've already done them, you're in great shape, but the review is still a good idea. So let's take a look at this. First one, which of the following objects are projectiles? List all that apply in alphabetical order with no commas or spaces between letters. Now when you do this, you should remember that a projectile, the definition, is that it only has the force of gravity acting on it. That implies that air resistance and friction are minimal. So which of the choices can you eliminate because they have a lot of friction or air resistance? Or only has the force of gravity acting on it? Well, A is sitting at rest on a table. So the table is pushing up on it, and it's just not falling. So that's out. B, the apple is free falling from a tall tree. Does it have air resistance? No. Does it have friction? No. Is anything acting on it besides gravity? No. Gravity is the only thing. So B looks pretty good. C, a skydiver is falling from 10,000 feet with her parachute open? Does she have air resistance? You better believe it. Yes. So that one's out. Um, a car is coasting to a stop. If you're coasting, I don't know about cars, but I know about bicycles. And when I coast on a bicycle, I take my feet off the pedal and I just come to a gradual stop. So there's not really a lot of air resistance or friction on it. All right, so that one looks okay, but but is the only thing acting on it is gravity? Is it falling? No, it's out. Same thing with E. E's out too. Cars driving along, they're not projectiles. Not unless you shoot them out of a cannon. Alright. Next one. A projectile can list all that apply. Well, remember a projectile only has the force of gravity acting on it. And that implies air resistance and friction are minimal and that only gravity is acting on it. And that means if only gravity is acting on it, the forces are not balanced. So which ones can you eliminate? And by the way, remember the tennis ball. If you understand the tennis ball, you'll understand an awful lot of things. So it is a projectile, so if you toss it up in the air, can a tennis ball move up? Well, yeah. Can it move down? Well, yeah. Does it have a constant speed after you let go of it? Well, no. Okay? So the projectile can experience the balance of forces. No, nah, the forces aren't balanced. Be sitting on a surface? No way. Encounter air resistance? Uh, not significant air resistance. So it really depends on how they define air resistance here. I'm going to take a guess and say it was probably not C. Um, have a constant speed? Does the tennis ball have a constant speed? Be moving upwards. Can the tennis ball move upwards? And be moving downwards. Can the tennis ball be moving downward? Hmm. Let's look at the next one. The forces on a projectile are, well, a projectile only has the force of gravity acting on it. That implies that air resistance and friction are minimal and that only gravity is acting on it, so the forces are not balanced. So which ones can you eliminate? There's only one answer that's right. The projectile is moving upwards and rightwards towards the peak of its trajectory. Which of the following force diagrams is representative of the forces acting upon the projectile? And the arrows represent the presence of a fourth. Force, sorry. Well, a projectile only has the force of gravity acting on it. So, which way does the force of gravity act? A uh, down. So, which one only has a downward arrow? Hmm, I wonder. The projectile is launched upwards and rightwards. After several seconds, it reaches the peak of its trajectory. So, we got some tricky one like that. And the peak is right there. Okay. So, which of the following force diagrams is representative of the forces acting right when it hits its peak? Okay, let's see. It's like a tennis ball. 
we know at the top the tennis ball's velocity is equal to zero. But is velocity the same thing as a force? Well, it says a projectile only has the force of gravity. Um, and gravity acts downwards. So which one only has the force of gravity? And does gravity ever stop working on the tennis ball or any projectile? Does gravity ever take a vacation? No. So even though the velocity is zero, the force is still downward and gravity is still pulling on the projectile and the tennis ball. The acceleration of the projectile is always directed. Remember, a projectile only has the force of gravity acting on it. So if gravity is the only force, which way does gravity pull? Which means, which way is the acceleration? Again, remember, acceleration is different than velocity. You could be going forward on the street and have a positive velocity, but when you step on the brakes, you have a negative acceleration. Positive velocity, negative acceleration, well, that means you're slowing down, of course. So, if these things are true, which one of these is true? The acceleration of a projectile has the greatest magnitude when? Well, a projectile only has the force of gravity acting on it. Gravity is what causes the acceleration. So if you've got a projectile going off from the coast and going up in here, uh, does the gravity ever change? Does the acceleration ever change? Remember, acceleration is not the same as velocity. Gravity always pulls down as long as you're close to the Earth. And it always pulls down as long as you're close to the Earth at 9.8 meters per second squared, which means your acceleration, as long as you're close to the Earth, is always the same. All right, we got a three kilogram projectile. It's launched upward and rightward from ground level. The magnitude of the acceleration at the peak is, come on, a projectile only has the force of gravity on it. And gravity causes the acceleration. So what is the approximate value of gravity? approximate value of acceleration due to gravity. Which of the following statements are true of the projectile's acceleration? Remember, a projectile only has a force of gravity acting on it. Is gravity always directed downward? Yes. Is gravity ever going upward? I don't think so. No, the velocity is upward, but gravity always pulls down. Is acceleration value zero at the peak? No. The velocity is zero, but gravity always pulls down. Is the acceleration increasing as it falls downward? Gravity never changes. So no, it's not increasing. Velocity increases, but not acceleration. The acceleration is decreasing as it goes up. No. Gravity never changes. The velocity changes, but not gravity. So the acceleration is the same. The acceleration is a constant value. Well, does gravity ever change? No, as long as we're close to the Earth. So does the acceleration caused by gravity ever change? No, as long as there's no air resistance. So that looks good. The acceleration value is dependent upon the mass of the projectile. Does gravity depend on the mass? No. There's nothing about mass in any of the equations we used. All right. The magnitude of the horizontal velocity of a projectile is always what? Remember, a projectile only has a force of gravity acting on it. What direction does gravity operate in? Horizontally or vertically? Oh, gravity only acts vertically. What direction are they talking about? Horizontal 
or vertical. Um, they're talking about horizontal. For a projectile motion, the next big thing is that motion acts independent for each direction. Therefore, there's no force acting in the horizontal direction. The only force is gravity, and gravity only acts vertically. If there's no force, that means there's no acceleration. If there's no acceleration in the horizontal direction, what does that mean about the velocity? Does it ever change? What is that definition of acceleration? Let's see, acceleration equals the change in velocity divided by time. So if acceleration is zero, and we know time is never zero, that must mean something else is zero. Oh, the change in velocity is zero for a horizontal. And if the change is zero, that must mean the velocity is not changing. If it's not changing, which one of these is right? Horizontal velocity or projectile is changing. Hey, hey, wait a minute, wait. Horizontal velocity is changing. Didn't we just spend a lot of time on that last one saying there's no force acting in the horizontal direction? That means there's no acceleration in the horizontal direction? That means what's happening to that velocity in the horizontal direction? Um, A equals zero, and A equals the change in velocity over time, but the change in velocity over time is zero, and they're saying it's changing? Come on, guys. Can't be. The magnitude of the vertical velocity of a projectile is always. Now, now what, what direction are they talking about? Uh, oh, yeah, vertical. And what direction does gravity operate? Um, vertical. And gravity is an acceleration, so that means that the acceleration or the change in velocity is like 9.8 meters per second squared vertically which means that it's always doing what? You know, and it says it's always. Always means it always has to be doing this. And let's see, is it always constant? No, remember the tennis ball? You know, the tennis ball goes up, tennis ball goes down. No, that vertical velocity is not constant. Up here, V equals zero. So it's not constant. Is the velocity of a vertical velocity zero? Well, if the vertical velocity is zero, that means it's just sitting there. That's not a projectile. Is the vertical velocity changing? Well, does the tennis ball change? Does its velocity change? You know, does it start out at zero and end at zero? No, it starts out with some number going up, becomes zero at the top, and starts with some, ends up with some number going down. So yeah, its velocity is always changing. Velocity is always 9.8. Uh, they're tricky here. This 9.8 number, oh, that's, that's the number for gravity. But the units, meters per second. They're talking about the velocity, not the acceleration. The velocity does not stay 9.8. That means it'd be being constant. Is the velocity always increasing? Well, does the tennis ball's velocity increase on the way up? No way. It slows down. So it's not always increasing. It increases some of the time, but this guy says always. So it's not always increasing. Which of the following statements are true of the vertical velocity of a projectile? Okay, this is really we just went through again. Okay, force of gravity is acting on it. Force of gravity acts vertically. Projectile motion acts independently for each direction. Well, we're just talking about the vertical direction. They say vertical. And they're talking about the vertical direction. Um, are they asking about velocity or acceleration? Because acceleration stays the same. It becomes gravity. But the velocity is always changing. Oh, they're talking about velocity. So again, remember the tennis ball. Can it move up? Yes. Can it move down? Yes. Does a tennis ball have a constant speed? 
No constant speed. If the speed is changing, what does it change by? Well, the change of velocity is the acceleration. Acceleration equals V2 minus V1, which is really just the change in velocity divided by time. So, is it constant? No. Is it, they're still saying constant. Remember, they're talking velocity, not acceleration. No. Is it zero at the very top of its trajectory? Is a tennis ball's velocity, vertically, zero at the very top? Yep. Is it changing by 9.8 meters per second every, 9.8 meters per second every second? Well, that's what acceleration means, the change in velocity. And if it, so yes, that is true. Is it always downward? Is the velocity of the tennis ball when you throw up, throw it upwards, always downward? No. Okay. Sometimes it's down, but not always. Is it directed upward as the projectile is rising and down as it falls? Well, yeah, that sounds like a tennis ball. Tennis ball has a velocity up, then it becomes zero, and then it goes down. So yeah, that looks pretty good. None of these statements are true. Hey, we just proved a couple of them. Projectiles launched horizontally. As it travels along a trajectory, the horizontal does what? And the vertical does what? Well, let's look at the horizontal. Okay, Projectile only has a force of gravity acting on it. Projectile motion acts independently for each direction. Which way does gravity operate? Vertically. What direction are they talking about? Well, let's look at horizontal first. If there's no force acting in the horizontal direction, that means there's no acceleration in the horizontal direction. That means the velocity in the horizontal direction is not changing. Okay, if it's not changing, is that increasing, decreasing, or remaining the same? Well, horizontal must remain the same. So that means this guy works for horizontal, and this guy works for horizontal, and this guy works for horizontal. The others are all out, horizontally speaking. So now let's take a look at the vertical stuff. The vertical component of its velocity well, vertically, there is an acceleration, and it is directed which way? Well, gravity acts down. Therefore, the acceleration must be down. Now, if you toss the tennis ball in the, up in the air, what happens to the velocity? As the tennis ball moves up, does the tennis ball go faster, slower, or stay the same? As the tennis ball reaches the top, what happens to the velocity at the very top? Well, what is velocity equal to at the top? And as the ball goes down, does the velocity get faster, slower, or stay the same? Oh, gee, it gets uh, important. The vertical component's velocity, uh, wow. I mean, it, it increased, it, it's going slower, it goes to zero, and then it gets faster. And, and so it's, this is out for vertical, this is out for vertical, this is out for vertical, and this is out for, this is out for vertical. Vertical remain the same? No. Does, does vertical remain the same? No. Does vertical remain? No. Boy, I hope there were some other choices here because I don't see it right here. Because, oh, wait a minute. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It says it just as it travels. You got to read these things. It says as it travels along its trajectory towards the ground. Oh, so we're just talking about the downward direction. So as it's going down, what's happening to vertical velocity? Oh, well, cool. shoot. The vertical velocity is increasing, it's going down. So let's go back here. Remains the same. Vertical velocity, ing oh, so it's E. Hey. Projectile is launched horizontally. Initial velocity vector is shown. So here's this guy. It's only horizontal. Choose the letters that represent the components of the velocity vector at positions Y and Z. So um, I'm going to look at what happens here. And what happens here? Okay, what way does gravity operate? Just vertically. What direction are they talking about? Horizontal or vertical? Well, they're really talking about both. Okay, let's look at just one at first. There's no force acting in the horizontal direction. That means there's no acceleration. That means the velocity in the horizontal direction is not changing. So it's remaining the same. So 
the horizontal velocity would be the same. That means this guy, it's smaller horizontally, because that guy's out. This guy, it's smaller horizontally, that guy's out. This guy would be okay, so we'll wait. This guy, it looks like it's okay. This guy, the horizontal velocity is smaller. This guy looks okay. This guy, the horizontal velocity is smaller. This guy looks okay. This guy, the horizontal velocity got bigger. This one, it got bigger. No, it didn't change. This one, bigger, it didn't change. This one, bigger, it didn't change. Okay, so we've eliminated a bunch of these guys, so these guys are all out. So now we just have four to look at. Now we're going to look at the vertical velocity. Remember, these are the components of the velocity. We've got a horizontal and a vertical. Well, what's happening to this thing? Well, it's falling down. That means the vertical velocity is going to be going downward. So D is out and H is out. And that leaves F and C. And we've got two letters we have to pick, so that's okay. So at Y, is the vertical velocity bigger or smaller than it is at Z? Well, this is at the start of its falling, so it's got a small vertical velocity. This is later, so the vertical velocity has gotten bigger. So F is your first choice in this case, and C would be your second choice. All right, it's really basically the same idea. Projectiles launched horizontally. Choose the letters represent position Y and position Z. Horizontal velocity never changes. So A's out, B's out, C is okay, D is okay, E's out, F's okay, G's out, H is okay, I, J, K, and L are out. So first I just looked at the horizontal velocity and took out all the choices where the horizontal velocity did not agree with my initial horizontal. Now I know that it's falling, so the vertical velocity is going to be going down. That takes out D and H. And I know at position Y the vertical velocity is smaller than it is at position Z. So which has the smallest vertical velocity? Ah, F. So F would correspond to position Y. And then C would correspond to position Z. So we have C for Z and F for Y. All right, it's the same thing again. Okay, except we got a couple of extra positions. We got a W and a Y. So again, I'm going to do the same. Oh, and, and we've got some initial vertical velocity. First, I'm going to go through and look at the, um, uh, the horizontals. And it looks like I can't see everything here. There we go. Oh, that helps. Okay, so I'm going to look at the horizontal velocity. A, too small. B, too small. C, too small. D, too small. E, too small too large, F's good, G's good, H too large, I too large, J's good, K too small, L too small, M's good, N, O too big, P too big, Q looks okay, R too big. Okay, now, so I've eliminated things based solely on the horizontal component. Now I'm going to look at the vertical component. At position W, is it going up? Or is it coming down? Well, it's going up. At position Y, is it going up or is it coming down? Well, it's going down. At position W, on its way up, is the velocity bigger than it is here or smaller? Well, what happens to a tennis ball when you toss it up? Its upward component gets smaller and smaller until it reaches zero at the very top. So I know at position W, the vertical component should be smaller than it is at position V, and it should be going up. So let's find some ups. Uh, there's J. Is it smaller? Yeah. And it's going up? Yeah. So J looks like a winner for W. Q is too big. Okay. M is the same size. The other guys are going down, so they're not going to work. 
All right. So J is good for position W and kind of draw a leaf over here. Okay. What about Y? Well, remember the symmetry of the tennis ball. The velocity going up at the same location is equivalent, but in a different direction, as the velocity going down. So if this were, say, a positive 10 meters per second, this would be a negative 10 meters per second. So we're looking for a downward arrow that's about the same size as J's upward arrow, only going down. Oh, that makes it easy. It would be G. Okay, so G would go with position Y. So it would be J, G. G, that was easy. Ah, do we want to do another one, really? Choose the letter that represents the components of the velocity vector at position Z. So this is Z. No, we could do, go through all. Remember what we just said, there's that symmetry. So at position Z, is it going up or down? Well, it's going down. And that downward velocity is going to be the same size as the upward velocity right here. So we're looking for a downward one that looks like about the same size. And of course, the horizontal is going to be exactly the same. Okay? So we want to find something that looks like that. So it's not A, not B, not C, not D, not E. Ooh, F is close, but I don't think so. That guy's too big. Not F, not G, not H, not I, not J. This guy's too small. Not K. Oh, it looks like our long lost friend is L. The downward velocity is the same magnitude, but the different direction as the upward velocity at the start. Now we know the position is the same. The horizontal velocity is the same magnitude as the horizontal velocity, because horizontal velocity does not change. Okay, we're looking for a W and X. All right, so let's look at the horizontal component. Horizontal stays the same. So that's a A, B, C, D, E, F looks okay. G, H, I. J looks okay. K's out. L looks okay. M looks okay. N's out. O's out. P's too big. Q's too big. R is too small. S is too big. T's okay. Used too small. All right, so I just looked for horizontal vectors and wanted to find them that were the same size as this. Now, at W, the vertical does as you go up, when you toss the tennis ball up, what happens to its vertical velocity? It slows down. So the vertical velocity for W should be there, but it should be smaller. So now I want an upward one that is smaller, but I haven't illuminated yet. Well, that would give me H. Okay, so H corresponds to W. What's happening to the vertical velocity right here? Well, at the very top of its path, the Y velocity is equal to zero. So which one of these has no Y velocity? J. So this would correspond to J. That's what we just did. All right, now we've got a word problem. Projectile is launched horizontally with a velocity of 50 meters per second. So going that direction, we got 50 meters per second. After three seconds, the magnitude of the horizontal, so we're still asking about this guy, is approximately what? Well, does the horizontal ever change? No. Therefore, the horizontal velocity is still 50 meters per second. So this guy is still 50 meters per second. The x horizontal velocity never changes. Remember, a projectile only has the force of gravity acting on it. Gravity goes downward. And remember, a projectile, the motion acts independently for each direction. So what happens in the vertical direction, because of gravity, does not affect what's happening in the horizontal direction because it has nothing working on it. Okay, magnitude of the vertical component is approximately. When they use the word approximately, 
That's their clue to use 10 meters per second squared for gravity instead of 9.8. So the approximate is their clue. We're using 10. So let's see. If the acceleration is 10, we've got uh, some formula for VF equals uh, VI plus AT. What was its initial vertical velocity? Well, it was launched horizontally, so VI vertically. So we're talking only Y components here. Vertically, VI was equal to 0. And we got a 10 here, and we got a uh, 3 here. So 10 times 3 gives us, uh, last I checked, that was 30. So our first one was 50, and our second one was 30. Now, we can do all this with the x and y organizer, too. I kind of ignored the x and just did with the y, so I did that thing. All right, upward, add an angle to the horizontal. Initial horizontal velocity is 40 meters per second, so this way we got 40. And the initial vertical is 40, so this way we got 40. Okay, after 6 seconds, the horizontal component is... Horizontal component never changes. So horizontal component is 40 meters per second. The vertical component does change. So, you know, I'm going to look at just the y's. You know, and for the y again, we've got uh, a equals a negative 10 meters per second squared. And because it says approximately, we're using 10. And we've got, you know, it's gone for 6 seconds. And the thing is, now we got a vi. So we got this thing that vf equals vi plus at. We had a positive 40 for the VI. We have that negative 10 for um, acceleration, negative 10 meters per second squared. And our time is 6. So 6 times negative 10 would be a negative 60. Negative 60 plus 40 is 20. It's a negative 20. Oh, but negative is a direction just asking for the magnitude. Magnitude means we're not worried about the direction, so negative 60 plus 40 is negative 20, and we're only worried about the 20. So there you go. Oh, projectile launched horizontally, hits the ground 0.5. If we launch it horizontally with twice the speed, it would hit the ground in see, a projectile only has a force of gravity acting in it. Projectile motion, for projectile motion acts independently in each direction. The only thing the two motions have in common is the time in the air. Because the projectile is in the air, it's in the air. It's traveling vertically, horizontally. When it hits the ground, it's no longer a projectile. So what causes it to fall to the ground? Um, what pulls it down? Oh, gravity, yeah. And which way does gravity act? Uh, vertically. Does shooting it horizontally faster affect gravity, basically? No, 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 no. No matter how fast I shoot a gun, you know, gravity doesn't change any. So does that change how fast it takes to fall to the ground? If gravity is what causes it to fall to the ground, and I haven't affected gravity, then did this time change? No. So it was half a second to begin with, and it's still half a second. Watched M horizontally. Time is dependent upon. You know, what are all these things? Well, what causes it to fall to the ground is gravity. Um, what causes gravity and you know, what, what effects do we have? Some initial distance, which we always say set to zero. A final distance, which is that height. Um, VI, oh, but wait, that VI is the vertical VI, not the horizontal VI. So only the vertical VI. Vertical VI, they're calling height. So that height. No, no, vertical VI. 
while vertical it's it's launched horizontally vertical vi in this case is zero um, gravity is the acceleration so gravity certainly has an effect and of course time but that's what they're asking about so what affects it um, gravity affects it um, the height affects it uh, this initial velocity it's only horizontally so no the horizontal speed doesn't mass I don't see anything with mass in there G yeah height yeah horizontally same height different speeds uh, 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 uh. come on guys you should remember what causes it did we change gravity by launching one faster no does gravity say, I'm not going to make you come fall down because you're going too fast? No. So they're going to take how much time to hit? The same time. The only thing two motions have in common is the time in the air. Okay? For a tennis ball, it takes five seconds to get to the top. It'll take five seconds to get to the bottom. So what's the total air time? Um, if it takes five seconds to fall down at the very top of its path, VI equals zero. So this at the very top is zero. Five seconds to fall down, approximately using 10, because I tell you to, for gravity, 10 times five. What is its final velocity vertically? velocity and angle see you can't say this and the reason you can't say B is because B says initial velocity and that initial velocity is at some angle we know the vertical component is going to be 50 meters per second okay but this is the actual velocity now we don't know what the horizontal component is we don't know what this vector is so B is wrong because it's just initial velocity. Here, we've got vertical velocity. A is good, B bad. An airplane flying horizontally. OK, so how does the initial horizontal velocity of the package compare to the horizontal velocity of the plane? Well, the package is in the plane. Therefore, they've got the same horizontal speed. Guy drops the package, keeps his speed going the same. Does anything affect the package's horizontal speed? No, because the only force of gravity acting on it is, or the only force acting on the package is gravity. So the horizontal speed stays the constant. Did anything affect the plane speed? No, he says he's going at a constant speed. So that package, same amount of time goes, okay? That means that that package is going to be right below the plane. Ah, this guy, you know, this cannon or whatever it is pointing straight up is going, the initial horizontal speed is the same as the horizontal speed of the truck. And nothing affects that horizontal speed. And the truck is going constant speed. So nothing is affecting his speed. So same time passes by. Guess what? That guy lands right back into the cannon. If Mr. Kimball can find it, ask him to show you the ballistic ball tomorrow. All right, this guy is different. And really for this one, what you really need to do is go back to the physics classroom. Yay! And then you need to go to Multimedia Physics Studios. Yay! And then you need to pick vectors and projectiles. Yay! And then you need to pick maximum range. Ah, and then you'll see. And that really is best shown with an animation, which is why it wasn't in your reading. So if you didn't get this guy, go back and look.
because it'll show up on the quest. Oh, and look, 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 look at this thing. It's talking about a uh, monkey and the zookeeper. Oh, and it talks about the plane and the package and a truck and a ball. And I bet those are animated. I wonder if that would help you with any of these other questions. Maybe. I hope this brief review helped to establish some of the important concepts of projectile motion. Next step is to move on to motion at an angle. Use trig functions to break the velocity into its horizontal and vertical components. Deal with each separately, remembering that time in the air is the only thing the components have in common. And thank you very much for your time.